Hello everyone, I'm Avi Savar, president of Suzy. It's my pleasure to welcome you to our first new product launch event of 2022, and it's an exciting one. This year has been challenging for many of us. We're coming into our third year post-pandemic, and it just seems like operating in uncertainty is here to stay indefinitely. Our environment continues to change, and rapidly. That means our behavior as consumers will continue to change. Are we bracing for a recession? If so, how long? Are gas prices gonna to continue to soar? How will inflation impact your consumer? What will happen with housing? Is there a credit bubble? It just doesn't seem as if there's an end in sight. Our mission at Suzy is to enable human understanding, and that means we're here to help you navigate that uncertainty and to do it at the speed of culture. We're changing the way brands think about research by integrating quant, qual, and the highest quality consumer audiences into a single connected research cloud, an end-to-end -end research platform that empowers your teams, letting them conduct iterative research with agency quality rigor in a matter of hours, not weeks, and at a fraction of the cost. This is our first product launch event of the year. That also means it's far from our last. Our product and engineering teams are firing on all cylinders. They are hard at work on an aggressive roadmap for the rest of the year. In just a couple of weeks, we'll be launching Global Audiences. Global has been in private beta for a while now, and it's finally ready for prime time. So you'll now be able to conduct quantitative global research in dozens of countries to start and many more to follow. And in less than a month, we'll be rolling out in-platform quotas, followed later in the year by an advanced cross-tabs explorer and more advanced profiling. Also later this year, we plan to launch asynchronous video, allowing you to capture unmoderated qualitative video at scale. But today is all about focus groups. Focus Groups adds critical new capability to Suzy Live. Suzy Live is designed specifically for making live research effortless. It integrates your quant with one-on-one -on -one in depth interviews or in-home product tests. And now for the first time, multi-person focus groups. In a couple of minutes, we're going to welcome Microsoft product marketing manager, Sunny Khan. Sunny is going to sit down with our very own Chief Customer Officer, Katie Gross, to talk about how Microsoft uses focus groups in their research and why it's a critical element to getting a deeper understanding of your consumer. We hope you take away some great tips from their conversation. After their chat, we'll break off into two groups. If you're already a Suzy Live customer, we'll see you in room number two. This is where Suzy's head of research, Lima Widmer, and Mackenzie Lawton from our Suzy Live operational team will talk you through the focus group offering so you can get started using it right away. Everyone else, you'll want to join us in breakout room one, where Wilson Morosa, who leads product strategy, and Katie Emerson, who leads customer success at Suzy, will do a deep dive into the importance of using Quant and Qual together to get a complete picture of your consumer. You'll have a chance to ask questions and chat directly with our expert team during these breakouts. Thank you all for joining us today. We are incredibly grateful for all your support and your confidence. Before I turn the stage over to Katie and Sunny, here's a quick introduction to focus groups. Enjoy. Thanks, Avi. Hi, everyone. I'm Leah. I'm the product manager of Suzy Live, and I'll take you through the demo of Suzy Live focus groups today. Let's get right into the platform. Okay. So moderators, viewers, and note takers can all join the interview from the Suzy Live platform up to 30 minutes early. They'll arrive here at our newly designed audio and video setup page. They will simply just select their, their camera and microphone options, and then you'll see they're ready to start their interview. One thing that we've added is just some technology best practices to make sure that our moderators get off on the right foot when starting their focus group. So let's start the interview. So here we are in the Suzy Live waiting room. One thing to note is that we're currently still in development on our discussion guide area here to the bottom left. The discussion guide is where you can, here's our participants. Uh, our discussion guide is where you can um, preload your questions. And during the interview, you'll be able to click through each one, leave some notes along with any collaborators that you have in the back room. And those will auto save and be 
um, available to you in the transcript and recording section after the interview. So as you guys can see here, as I was talking, I've had some of my participants show up for the interview. So this is the waiting room. This is where our participants will show and wait. Uh, keep in mind, while we are in this experience, they cannot see or hear me, but I can see and hear them. So that serves as an extra layer of um, pre-screening where I can just make sure that their audio and their video is set up properly. Um, so as I am ready to start selecting some participants, I can hover over their thumbnail and you can see they get selected into this interview room category, which means these are the people that I'm going to select for the interview. And scroll to see your full list here. Uh, while I'm in the waiting room, I have access to our backroom chat. So if there's any type of conversation that I need to have with my team members, I can do so now. Fix my typo. Um, I can also chat with these participants who are in the waiting room here. Maybe we're running a few minutes late. Maybe I need uh, them to add a pen and a paper to get ready. Um, I can say so here. When I join the interview, these five participants will, oh, I'm sorry, when I start the interview, these five participants will be selected and they'll start with me. But I'm going to leave Katie here in the waiting room just because I'm very happy with the five that I've added, but I'll leave her there just in case. So this is introducing our floater experience, which means once the interview starts, Katie will be notified that she wasn't selected for the interview at this time. She's instructed to wait for 15 minutes and that she'll still be paid for her time if we don't end up selecting her for the interview. So let's get started. Here we are. Hey, everyone. Thanks for coming on. For demo purposes, we do have everybody um, muted on their site, so we don't have any feedback coming through. But of course, in true focus group functionality, I can see and I can hear everyone. They can see and hear everyone as well. Uh, you can see that some people have themselves muted, which I can see here on their video thumbnail. I can also mute myself, and they would be able to see that as well. I'm identified to them as the moderator, Leah, and you can see I have all of their name tags here as well. Similar to the waiting room, we are still building out that discussion guide, but again, that will be a uh, pretty important tool as uh, you begin to go through your discussion guide questions and stay on track um, and notify um, your other note takers of where you are in your guide. We still have our full chat functionality. We'll be building out notifications as well so that, for example, Mackenzie left us a message. I could see that here. Um, and then I can tell them a message too. And then I could send a message to Katie in the back room as well, just saying, hey, we're not ready to uh, proceed with you or you know, you can leave and be dismissed. Okay, so pretty import importantly, we have the participant list functionality here in the moderator's toolbar. If I click the participant list, I'll see a list of everybody who's here in the interview. I'll have the ability to mute them or unmute them from here. This is something we're still working on. And then you can see here, I have this mute all um, functionality as well. So maybe I just want to quickly mass mute everyone. This will be mute all. And then if I would unclick that, it would be unmute all or ask all to unmute. If you remember when we were in the waiting room, I left Katie there as a floater. Um, so now if I didn't need her, I have this ability to admit her to the interview room even after we've started. Further along in my focus group, I want to share my screen. So I simply click the screen share button here. I am opted if I wanna share my entire screen, my window or an application. I have a window here that I wanna share. You'll see it automatically jumps to that, which is CrowdTap. So I'll go back to my focus group so you guys can see here what it looks like when I share my screen, it's visible to me. And I can still see all of the other participants here um, as my screen adjusts. I can go to that tab, scroll around. And again, if this was an application, you could have it as a side-by-side. -side, so it's pretty easy for you to navigate while you share your screen and still conduct your focus group. To end the screen share, I will simply click the screen share button again. Um, a couple of things to note. Uh, we are still building, like I said, chat notifications. 
the ability to toggle your screen from speaker view to gallery view, which is the view you're seeing here now. Um, and we'll have a lot of other uh, features too regarding the ability to remove somebody to, from the waiting room and, and as well as um, the ability to chat an individual member in case there was just someone you needed to one-on-one -on -one, um, send a message to as well. Before I close out this recording, I will just end by saying uh, when I do end this interview, this will be accessible in um, a transcript and a video recording of this gallery view in the Suzy Live dashboard. And all of the features for post analysis that you know and love will still be there, which is transcript search, um, click the transcript to play, bookmarking, clipping, and of course, downloading your video assets. Thanks so much. Hello, everyone. I'm Katie Gross, Chief Customer Officer here at Suzy. As Avi mentioned a few moments ago, today's program is to celebrate the launch of our focus groups offering. And to help us do so, we have a very special guest with us today, Sunny Khan, Product Marketing Manager at Microsoft, to chat with us about how he's used focus groups in his own research and provide some tips for all of you in attendance. Sunny, welcome. Hey, Katie, thanks so much for having me. Awesome. So let's get us started by getting to know each other a little better. Could you please tell us a little bit more about yourself and your experience at Microsoft? For sure. Yeah. So my name is Sunny and I'm a product marketing manager in content services at Microsoft. Um, I've been here for about two years and I'm currently working on projects where my job is to incorporate customer feedback and customer voice into the product planning process. Awesome. All right. So we're going to dive right on in. Uh, we'd love to talk to you, first of all, about Quant and Qual combined. So tell us a little bit more about how do you use Qual and Quant research together? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great question. So um, for myself, I think the way that we typically look at it is we use quantitative data to get a better uh, understanding of signals and trends and just general insight as to what's really going on in the spaces and the projects that we're working on. And then we pair that with qualitative data to just give us a better understanding um, from people directly, what is their personal live insight into, you know, how they're thinking, how they feel, and things that they might not be able to fit into um, fit into a survey. Okay, that makes sense. And so when you're approaching a new research project, how do you determine which research methodology you're going to use for that project? So that's really based on what are the actions that we're trying to influence. So if, for example, we're trying to enter into a new space and we're really trying to figure out, okay, you know, how is this industry looking like? We're going to tend to focus on more broader research, research and reports and market trends. But if, for example, we're launching something that's more specific and we want to get a pulse on, okay, what is the, what is the customer perception about this? What are they thinking? What should we even name this and what value do they derive from this? Then we're going to benefit much more by having some personal crafted survey instruments yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And so how do you use agile tools to help you tell that kind of quant qual story? I think um, the benefit of having agile tools is that you're able to get this live feedback that you're able to adjust and invest into, um, especially because you get live customer input. And as you're going into the building process, you're also being able to say, OK, um, I, I really want to, I really want to launch this feature. I want to make this quick change, but I don't want to have to wait six to eight weeks to figure out what what, what the next step is. Um, being able to use some agile tools, you're able to build now and work directly with people collaboratively to get that feedback in in a much quicker uh, quicker amount of time. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so let's focus on. Um, focus groups and IDIs. So first of all, what are your kind of thoughts around focus groups versus IDIs? Um, and what do you gain for anyone in the audience? IDI meaning in-depth interview with one consumer. Um, and Sunny, what do you think we can gain from kind of one methodology versus the other as it pertains to focus groups and IDIs? For sure. I think that the correct one depends on the research need and the problem you're trying to solve and the actions that you're trying to influence. So for example, um, you can save a lot more time by working with focus groups than you can um, with IDIs by getting much more voices and much more feedback a lot quicker. Yeah, great. So we have definitely come a long way um, in the last um, 20 years since I've been in market research as it comes to focus groups. And I'm sure that for many folks, when we think of focus groups, we think of it like a typewriter. It's an old fashioned methodology. 
in fact, when I personally hear focus groups, it takes me way back to the UK um, when I used to have to drive across the country to a couple of different cities. And usually it was hosted at a, a host person's house and the cookies were always the best part of the uh, of the focus group. Um, and then, of course, I had to transcribe all of that into into text uh, before putting it into a presentation. It would be really weeks. Um, I was recently at the Insights Association, actually, where we were talking about focus groups and uh, Steve Schlesinger, of Schlesinger Research, was mentioning that often focus groups were um, were held in his bedroom when he was a child by his mom, who had uh, set up the company in the first place. So it was a really kind of nostalgic approach to market research. Um, but we've definitely come a very, very long way. So, Sammy, in your opinion, what is the difference between in-person focus groups, um, as they were back in the day, versus those virtual and digital focus groups that we're now able to run? Yeah, for sure. I think the biggest thing, uh, besides the cookies, obviously, um, is the breadth of for virtual groups, just the breadth of people you can have um, by hosting it online. For example, um, you're able to access people from all across the US. You're able to access, uh, access and speak to people from all across the world, which is super cool because um, for a large company, we serve people from everywhere and being able to, you know, pull people from those different audiences and get their perspective in real time is something that's so unique and so beneficial. Um, at the same time, one thing that I really like um, is just the agile component to it. For example, if we're hosting a live focus group um, virtually, just being in the background and being able to watch um, from my perspective it gives me a lot of benefit because I can influence that moderation process. For example, if somebody says something that we really like to hear and we want to hear more about and especially invite other people in the room, we can do so by asking like, hey, messaging the moderator on the side and saying, hey, like, I really want to hear more about this uh, or this triggered another question that we might not have been thinking about. Can you try to incorporate this into the flow? So having that flexibility and the ability to adapt is something that's really special. But, you know, at the same time, having in-person focus groups, there's a lot more benefit because a lot of people get more comfortable by being in person. And so they might be able to, and willing to open up more. The other thing, though, is um, you get this kind of body language that you won't be able to pull and dissect from um, by being virtual. I, I, obviously, you get a lot more facial data by um, having everybody in the room and focusing on their expressions. Um, but that I, I feel like that's one missing component. Yeah, that makes sense. Again, it comes back to the right methodology for the right research um, question that you have for sure. So what are some of the key things that you look for when you're looking for a focus group moderator? For sure. I think the most important um, aspects are somebody that's going to be composed and adaptive. Somebody that's going to be able to um, take the questions that the audience, uh, take the questions and comments um, from us and readily apply them to the live focus group. Um, and building off of them and making sure that they're consistently making the people more comfortable. Um, and like I mentioned before, being able to adapt to some of these agile, some of these agile situations that we're in. Um, for example, um, what, if we're in, if we'd set up a research, um, if we set up a focus group on uh, Thursday and then by Friday morning, we're like, oh, OK, there's a couple more things we want to hit on in that conversation and discussion. It's super great to be able to have a moderator that's able to adapt for them for those circumstances. Or even sometimes, like I mentioned before, while they are in the focus, they're in the focus group, um, giving them an opportunity, um, to, uh, ha us having an opportunity to message them um, in the background saying, hey, "Ooh, like, I really like this, like ask more questions about this or ask what they meant by that. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of great functionality. I remember just passing yellow post-it notes to moderators back in the day. Now, virtually, we have a lot more functionality to, to help with that for sure. Um, so focus groups at Suzy, obviously, Sunny, you've been uh, one of our early adopters, one of our early users. So you used our uh, virtual focus group offering. Could you tell us a little bit more about your experience? Yeah, for sure. So um, I'd set up time with a virtual focus group to get a better pulse on perception, um, people's this case on uh, people's this take on our value proposition, messaging, and its overall use for our a new project that we were working on. And so that experience was super cool and um, positive for us because we were able to um, give our questions, our goals, and our actions, and then work collaboratively with the uh, Ask Susie team to talk about what are the things we were trying to influence. Um, and then we were able to just get all of this great feedback that was packaged together for us. Um, both both you know we were able to get the live um get the live the live spiel by um sitting in on those rooms and also just have the package report at the end so um it was super great that we were able to um 
pull this all together in a very timely manner as well. So did you use any other method methodologies to run alongside the study in your in your research program? Yeah, so uh, we paired our qualitative data with quantitative data. So what we did was um, we had this, we wanted to get a better uh, understanding of user perception um, for this new offering that we were working on to help influence the name and the messaging. So first we did a qualitative study to get a good understanding of what people were thinking, what their live feedback was, would they use the project, what they thought the Pro the product was doing. Once we had that data, it gave us a lot more in insight as to the way that our customers were thinking, and it helped us actually craft a more effective quantitative survey that we used to figure out, okay, what do people think about the platform? What does it look like it's doing? Um, what should we name it? Um, and so it was really good to have that, that two punch um, in order to influence the actions that we were taking in terms of the messaging um, and the naming. Yeah, that's great. That two punch approach is so helpful. Often you kind of, especially in a new category or a new product offering, you are trying to write a survey um, without too much context. So it is a great, um, a great solution to be able to run that really quick qual in order for you to then understand the words consumers are using, what they're thinking before then measuring that quantitative element for sure. Um, and of course, you mentioned speed there. So I have to ask, how quickly were you able to get up and running and get your data back from those focus groups you ran with us? Yeah, it was a lot quicker than I'd imagined. So um, the qualitative data was done in under 10 days and the quantitative data was followed very, very shortly after. Um, and this was super helpful for us because this was a product uh, that we were planning on launching a few days after we'd gotten the data back. And so it was great that we were able to, you know, just reach out to the Ask Susie team, let them know the problems we were trying to solve. And then just very, very quickly, instead of expect, you know, usually you'd expect the six to eight week turnaround, getting everything done in under two weeks and, you know, having a team that was very responsive and flexible for our um, needs. Great. And is speed an important part of your research processes? Yeah, for sure. Um, especially, you know, just as we're, we're in this, we're in the space where we're constantly trying to be iterative and, you know, we want to have that customer voice throughout that process. Um, and in that building, build that building journey. So it's super, super important. Yeah, great. So final couple of questions. Let's look ahead. So one question I have for you is what advice would you give to your peers in the audience that are just starting to dip their toes into online qualitative research? Yeah, I'd say that it's something that's been very beneficial for um, the teams that I've worked on, the projects I've worked on, and really allowed us to integrate, integrate people's is, um, raw feedback and thoughts into the building process, which is something that's continuing to be something um, important, just important for our organization and companies around the world. Um, and just, I, I would suggest when you're going into the process, making sure that you're asking great questions, understanding what are the actions you actually want to influence, and then how can you work collaboratively with people at the Ask Susie team, um, with people in our organization to solve, to solve for those needs. And just being very, very good and reasonable with understanding how ex how exactly I'm going to use this data to influence that next step. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and my advice also is as I've been going through that process over the last uh, two years um, is really give it a try. It's tested it out. As you mentioned, um, you were surprised at how fast and easy it was. Um, some of these methodologies that felt very cumbersome in the past are significantly easier, faster, um, and much more streamlined um, when you're using digital technology to, to really help you out there. My next question is, what advice do you have for folks who are just starting out in their research careers? Yeah, um, I would say, you know, this, this is an industry that is going to be that's going to grow more and more in its importance, um, especially in an agile sense, because um, people are building products very quickly now. And sometimes one issue that comes along in the process is, OK, we don't have time to go about doing a study. We don't have time to ask people what they think. We just want to kind of build this, get this out there and then see you know, what the general perception is. I think you know, realizing and working, realizing that there are tools and resources to get that to get that quick feedback, to get that user input is something to definitely be mindful of. And, you know, just making sure that you're leveraging them properly, asking the right questions, working, um, working very closely with your research partners is going to be super, super um, important down the line. And it's going to be integral to making sure that you're building things that people love and that people are going to get value from. 
Yeah, that's great. I'm glad you say that. I've been a, a lifelong market researcher, and you know, I think that this industry is is innovating so fast, um, and there is so much, uh, so many great kind of brains and heads coming into the industry. Um, it's definitely come a long way. As I mentioned, I was actually in the, a short story for you all. I was in Palisades shopping mall recently. I went to watch Top Gun, the new the new movie. And there was a couple of different focus group facilities that were in that shopping mall. And uh, the person I was with kind of pointed out, oh, that's what you do. I'm like, it's actually not. <laughs> it's uh, it's progressed so much since some of those kind of mall focus groups. Um, it's a fantastic, I've had a fantastic career in market research um, that's taken me across the world. So my advice for anyone who's starting their career in market research is it is a super fun industry. Um, and I think for, for brands as well, I saw a great quote yesterday and unfortunately I can't remember who it was from, but it mentioned um, when I looked at myself, um, I was able to focus. When I looked at my competitors, I was able to focus. But when I spoke to my consumers and the people using my product, I succeeded. And I think that's really important that we do have to bring that consumer voice into every decision that the brands are making and that companies are making. Um, so my favorite question for all of our guests um, and a tough one for sure, where do you see the industry in a year or in five years from now, Sonny? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. It's funny. Um, I, sometimes I think like had somebody asked somebody this question five years ago, I I would bet that they were completely wrong about how quickly things have progressed, especially in terms of this virtual space and um, how things have become more agile. Um, so I think I'll just continue to you know build off of that trend. I feel like in five years, it's going to be something that's going to be completely different than where we are right now. But I have high confidence that it's going to be agile first. It's going to be um, constantly asking users and people what they think and how they're feeling and would they use this? What are the unique, simple needs that they're trying to solve? And are we solving for those needs? And I think, you know, it's research is going to continue to be at the forefront. It's going to get, I think it's going to get more and more simple in terms of the accessibility. Um, because there's more and more people just willing to give their opinions. There's more and more resources out there like Ask Susie that are allowing businesses to more readily access those opinions and those thoughts. And so I think that um, in, in short, I just think that it's going to be um, something that's going to grow quicker and it's going to be something that's going to be just more accessible and ready. Yeah, absolutely. It's about making it simple. I think it's making it simple for those consumers to give their feedback in a easy environment. It's about making it easy for those brands to ask those questions in an easy environment as well and reducing that friction to really bring that consumer voice to life for sure. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Sunny. That's it for this part of our presentation. But next up, we're going to split into two breakout sessions, one focusing on the Quant Qual story and the other focusing on Susie Live. You do not want to miss them.